Welcome back to the Misadventures podcast. I'm Brittany Shulman. And I'm Paula Marie, also known as XO Honeybee Marie. Welcome back, everybody. Uh, like, comment, subscribe, do all the things down there. I'm really excited about this episode because uh, it's kind of jumping off our last episode um, that we just did. If you want to watch that, you know, it's no spoilers or anything. So um, go and watch that as well. It kind of kind of tie into each other. Yeah, so our last episode was uh, in imposter syndrome, and today we are covering misadventures and rejection. So why are we covering this, Paula? Um, we are covering this topic because, well, um, uh, it just it's a it's a huge uh, thing in my life. But before I go on that, let's talk about what we're wearing. Absolutely. There's no rejection here. If you want some Chris, Kristen Gentry, these are Alpha Pi Omega uh, earrings, the sorority. And then I'm also wearing the floral, red floral bottom. It doesn't look red on camera, and it's actually a very nice, pretty red color. Uh, the earrings are just as red, and you can't really tell. They look orange on camera, but uh, this is from Lynette Tracy. Gorgeous. I love, I love this. It elevates... If I'm just being, you know, lazy mom, and my shirt says I'm not getting ready today, which is a lie. I did get ready today, but if I wanted to elevate any outfit, I just throw this bomber on, and then I look like I tried. <laughs> I look like I tried, <laughs> and put that, myself together. <laughs> let me just say that bomber is bomb. I love that. I might, I might just have to go, and I will link everything on our episode down down there, where you can also like, subscribe, and comment um and so i love that bomber i'm just so fascinated by it i don't know how to turn my notifications off on my computer so i'm so sorry if you're hearing a ding um i will figure that out later and so i am wearing some birch bark uh earrings from minnesota they were a gift from Brittany. um they're from the leech lake ojibwe tribe Yes, my husband's tribe is for my husband's people. I just thought they were so cute. I mean, they're just, yeah. And then I'm also wearing, I have to stand up. Yeah, I, I can't stand up in my very precarious situation here. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this is the Black Sheep original. They, she has everything from mugs, t-shirts, um, prints. Uh, I have her mug. And um, speaking of mugs... Speaking of mugs, if you would like your very own Native Humor is Something Else mug, you can go to the website link below, uh, Brittany Shulman, the Something Else Collection, uh, <laughs> and I'm selling mugs. Uh, I've got them in blue. Wait, I've got them in red and in blue. My brain went <laughs> do, 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 there. Um, they're very cute, very, very nice. Uh, size mugs. You can get 20% off your order if you use the code Queen B from the Misadventures podcast. So if you are uh, on the Misadventures podcast and you want that code 20% off, go get you some mugs, get a matching set, share with your honey, your boo boo, whatever. <laughs> and let's just say this is our first code and our first sponsorship. So, like, yay us. <laughs> and purchasing these helps us continue all the things that we're doing on the podcast so if you like what you hear and you like a mug go get you a native humor is something else <laughs> i love that i love that um very very clever way to own up to some we've talked about this in another episode misadventures of something else in something else and um great way to own it because we own it now Oh, uh, well, uh, that was my thing the whole time was the whole time something else was a thing was was a thing. Uh, native humor just kept shining through. And so I love that. <laughs> I love our people. And this is very clever. And I, I called myself clever native for a long time. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I was clever. <laughs> well, so that's terrific. <laughs> I uh, uh, we were talking about the native humor and whatnot, but that's my favorite trauma response. <laughs> native humor. <laughs> um, so speaking of trauma, 
Uh, we were actually wanted to talk about rejection a little bit because there, there's a comment, particularly I made in the last one, was rejection is never about you. And we just wanted to dive into a little bit more about what that means. We've all felt rejection. We've all seen it happen. And me, I'm a words person. So let me just, I had it up here, but now my phone closed off. So rejection specifically is the dismissing or refusal of a proposal, idea, ex offer, et cetera. Okay. Yeah. Then also it's the spurning of one's affections. So, yeah. uh, that people so people fear that rejection people fear being spurned um and, and that they're that people aren't going to love them and i know that that's a, a issue for me specifically uh that i inherited i know ex uh, if we know that there's historic trauma we know that there's um things that are passed down and for some folks we know that rejection is that thing that's passed down that that response that we feel that fear of not being loved uh, is very real. And for me, I know mine started with my father leaving. I spent a long time and let's just, just to recap, the short version is, um, he left when I was six. There were some, some issues. We were living with my grandparent, my mom, my grandparents, my dad. Uh, and he had some issues, which let me just go back. My parents were super duper young. Like my mom was 22 when I was born and my dad was 19. So they're super duper young. So when I was six, they finally decided to separate. And it was when I was 12, when they actually got a divorce, they just stayed separated for a really long time. Of course, in North Carolina, you have to be legally separated for a year before you can even file for divorce. So they just took that a little bit longer. <laughs> they took a little bit longer. So, um, and I remember vividly when they decided to get the divorce i mean they hadn't lived together in years they hadn't been together in years my mom was a very good mom she would take us over to his family and make sure that we had that relationship with them and it was on one of those trips where we we're over at his mom my grandma's house and he was there and they uh sent us in the back room so that they could have a discussion so the adults could talk you know as kids went in the back room and they were i remember hearing them yell at one another and it was with me my brother my sister and my cousin terry wayne and i remember just being so upset by it and he said well at least your parents aren't hitting each other that's a whole nother <laughs> his parents had that issue that was a whole nother conversation so anyway um and my mom came in the back she got she said come on we're gonna go now and as we're driving home because it was about a 30 45 minute drive uh my mom goes we're going to get a divorce this is not your fault. This has no, this is us. We, we've made this decision and we're going to move forward with it. And I cried. I boohoo cried. I don't think my, I don't remember how my brother or my sister reacted. My sister was much younger. I think she was probably six. I was 12 and my brother was 11. So I spent a long time after that trying to figure out where things went wrong and i think it was 18 i was 18 i may have even been 19 or 20 and i was over at my grandma's house and you know i'd had that whole conversation again about you know what happened and how did it happen and my uncle tommy who just got out of jail he looked at me and he goes honey why are you trying to figure this out there won't nothing you could do it was like pink that's why I wanted to figure it out. Because if I could figure out what went wrong and how it messed up, I'd figure out how it was my fault and I could fix it. That's a whole nother issue. <laughs> but it's uh, my father not being in my life as much as he should have been, as much as he could have been. And even now we don't have a, the we don't have a relationship and it's not for lack of me reaching out because I've always left the door open. Once I resolve some of my own daddy issues from that, I realized that his rejection of me has absolutely nothing to do with me. It's not my issue. My issue is to love him as, you know, if you're a believer in Christ and in Jesus, then you love people. And my job is to love him and I love him. Um, and I've always left the door open. I The last few times I've seen him, it was like, here's my numbers. Here's my address. Call me anytime. Here I am. And he hasn't been able to heal himself to a point where he can do that. So I know that us not having a relationship, 
is not him rejecting my love. It's not him rejecting me. It's him having his own issues he has to deal with. And so now that I understand that as a grown grown person, <laughs> as a much growner than 18, 19, 20, um, I've been able to heal from some of that and been able to recognize that rejection, we, we, we all reject people. We all reject people's ideas. We all reject, you know, not everything's a winner. That doesn't mean you reject the whole person. That doesn't mean you love that, don't love that person. So I, I feel like I've gone on a really long tangent. <laughs> Maybe there's something you want to add or share. <laughs> That's my story. Oh. <laughs> That's my story. That's what we're sticking to, right? Um, <laughs> so, you know, I think that I a lot of people can relate to having father issues or issues in rejection. Um, and so I have a sort of a similar, I'm going to really talk actually about how, what rejection does to me, um, because I will move mountains to avoid it. And rejection has got, the fear of rejection has gotten me into some very, um, serious situations to where I wasn't being taken care of. I, my needs weren't being met, but I would rather sit there and suffer in silence than be rejected. And I would do anything to keep them around. So I, um, well, first of all, I had a nine year relationship to totally blow up in my face. Right. And that's not our story today, but it just shows you that I stayed for nine years where my needs weren't being met. I was unhappy. Um, but you know, once that blew up in my face, I thought, okay, well now I'm in therapy. Now I'm working on these issues. This won't happen again. I will not repeat this cycle. The very next person that I dated actually, um, was worse than the partner I had for nine years. And I like held and it, it, what really disappoints me about that situation is I thought in my mind, I had grown past a lot of those attachment issues and those, that fear of rejection to the point where I could have a healthy relationship. This taught me that I had a whole lot more healing to go and I had a whole lot more work to put into um, myself as a person. So my fear of rejection, because we don't get there. We don't get to that place, Brittany. There, I cannot be rejected. There's just no way. It's, yeah, you, it's, you, you can't even get to the other, it's an other person issue. I'm not even addressing the issue. Right. <laughs> it's not going to happen. Yeah. Right. <laughs> and and I, I, I can sit here and suffer and love this person enough for them to love me back. Mm. Ooh, that's a deep one, right? That is deep. <laughs> um, but in, in my experience with that, I, like I said, it was probably, oh gosh, it was probably three, two years after I broke up with this person that I started dating this other person. And I... We'll, we'll call person A, Adam, and we'll call person B, Bob. Okay, so... Person Adam or Adam is the nine year relationship. Bob was my follow up. <laughs> exactly. Yes, yeah, the A B. We got it. Go ahead. <laughs> the pattern, the pattern um, with Bob was the same, and it wasn't until I had to really after I finally was like, I'm done. I can't do this anymore. Um, and very many friends having conversations with me, I had to address that again. And it was like opening the same can of worms that I had with Adam. So Bob, um, I finally just ghosted him and cut off all communication because we didn't work. Well, I'm rejecting him at this point, right? Um, this is me rejecting you and you didn't really reject me. But the fact that he didn't ever reach out again was the rejection for me. When okay. I, took I, I, I think we can all relate to that. I don't want you, but I want you to want me so that I can want to, so I can so show you that I don't want you. Exactly. <laughs> I think exactly. we've all had that moment. It's like, I, wait, what? You don't want me? Me? Yeah. <laughs> so we go to this deep, deep-seated issue of rejection being com 
completely personal and that's what it that's what keeps me from getting into the even just addressing it because there's something deeply seatedly seatedly deeply wrong with me that you won't stay and that you're rejecting me as a whole person and I there's no way that you shouldn't not be able to love me, I guess. Like, so it, it becomes very personal. Mm -hmm. because, And even if he's not good for me, and that's my biggest thing is, it, he wasn't good for me. He wasn't, he was, as a matter of fact, which is hindsight 2020, right? Oh, is <laughs> Like, you don't, I don't see those things until I'm completely out of the situation. Mm -hmm. So it becomes this, like, I wasn't good enough in some way. Like you you mentioned earlier, you know, if I can figure out the problem, I can fix it and, and I can and, control and it somehow. There it is. And that's the thing about rejection is that we have absolutely no control over other people. It's in fact, it's none of our business what other people think about us. It's mm -hmm. our job just to be and to live, and it's none of our business what other people think about us. And we have absolutely no control over how some, how people perceive us. I mean, you can come, you can come put together, you can do all the things and look all good and stuff, but people are still going to form their own opinion based on their experiences and who they are. Mm -hmm. So, when you have those moments of oh, they don't like me. Oh, something's wrong with me. No, not necessarily. It doesn't necessarily mean something's wrong with you. Same thing like if you're going for uh going for a job. If you're going for a job and they don't pick you. It You're not completely wholly horrible. You're not a bad person. It's got nothing to do with that. It's just they needed these qualifications versus these qualifications. and Or they needed these, these sets of skills versus these sets of skills. And there's lots of other reasons why. So rejection really is never personal and never. That's why I say it's never really about you when people reject you. It's, right. it's very counterintuitive that way, but go ahead. And well, and like with the, like, if you're looking at a job, you can have all the qualifications and sometimes it's just about one thing or a few things, you know, it's not the whole picture. So one of the things that I feel like, um, oh my gosh, my mind went blank, of course. So uh, go ahead. <laughs> I will come back to that point when it comes back. Yeah. So, um, I don't know. It took me, it, it did take me a while understanding that, um, that it wasn't that, and, and it spilled over into my relationships as well and how I would choose men and the men I would choose or would mm -hmm. choose not to. And I remember in my early twenties being, I just want someone to love me because I felt so rejected. Like I wasn't good enough and I wasn't, you know, I wasn't lovable. And it it there were several relationships early on in my era. There was where the guy totally cheated me, and I was like, "You won't ever do that to me again." But I'll still be with you. And um, eighteen year old Brittany put up with that. Thirty. Well, how old am I now? 30, 37 year old Brittany would not put up with that because it's minute. You didn't think enough of our relationship. I mean. If you want other people, go get other people. Shoo. Mm -hmm. It has nothing. I mean, that's fine. That's what you want. I don't have to be what you want. And that sort of depersonalizing it and taking that that piece out of it, taking out the, the and, and also taking out that I can't control it. I cannot control what other people do. I can't control what other people think. I can only do my best to present myself in a way that I feel good and confident about. Yeah. yeah. And and that's where um we were where I was going with the whole situation about not taking it personal. But when I when I'm the rejectee, it's never like or when I'm the rejector, sorry, wrong way. Um mm -hmm. when I'm the rejector and there's like face it, we've all rejected something, right? Uh, yeah. We've all, we've all done it. It was never about the person in itself. It was about sort of something that didn't mesh well or you know i'm not going to take this because this is not what i want um mm -hmm. i wish you the best of luck 
I hope that you find what you're looking for. And it's simple as that. So if we were to turn that around, you know, where we're going with this is that it isn't personal. It's about that other person's experiences, what they have over there. And being rejected has actually, <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm laughing, I'm giggling, because being rejected has been some of the best things that have ever happened to me. <laughs> Uh, to so, quote you, sometimes the trash has to take itself out. <laughs> <laughs> that is my mantra. But, you know, the trash takes itself out. And it has happened so often that I'm like, okay, well, you know, sometimes it is just about the trash taking it out. And I don't always come to that conclusion. I don't always, I'm always like, there's that, that sort of grief process that goes through but then I'm like oh wow the trash did really take itself out and I didn't really have to do anything so you know like, well it, it's so right. funny because dating in my early 20s was like just love me just love me just love me dating in my 30s was like um no I want what I want and I want these things and I could tell sometimes the guy would just be walking I'd be like yeah you're not for me <laughs> he's just walking yeah. around mm -mm. no mm -hmm. No, oh, thank no. <laughs> Sometimes and there was a lot. More, I, there was a lot more ownership on my end because I wasn't just what was available, what was there, and what would say I like. Heck, the oh, I am looking for this kind of person. I am looking mm -hmm. for um this. This is the these are the pieces that I I, I want, and these are the and it was. I mean, I was never don't have a type i was never mm -hmm. like super like if you look at the the list of boyfriends honey honey <laughs> they range all over <laughs> uh, they, so, so i don't have a specific as much as i had like these are the characteristics like with my husband i want i don't know what's going out there <laughs> But I wanted someone who who was a, a loving, generous person. I wanted someone with a head on their shoulders. Uh, uh, <laughs> I you can know. hear that, but that's like wow. Her lips <laughs> or her um, her journey to this point has paid off because that screaming is the result of <laughs> oh, having Arching a loving girl, girl. <laughs> That's what you get, guys. When you find someone, this is a, a little show. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, so that it was very different experience going going from my twenties to my thirties in dating, and um, and being in very a very different place, and knowing, and 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 dating in the beginning, dating for someone to love me versus dating to find a partner. It's very different. It's a very different experience. And I'm, I'm 33 and I noticed that, uh, and this is, and you know, real, to be quite honest with you, this doesn't go just for, um, dating anymore for my thirties. It goes with the relationships that I have with friendships, um, intimate partners, work colleagues, all of that is, I know what I want and I know what I want to spend my energy on. Mm -hmm. And if you're not going to meet those requirements that I have, I don't need to expend my energy on you. And that's really, I think when you hit your thirties is your bubble becomes so small, you know, and you have this certain amount of energy you're willing to put into people. And if it's not for me right now at this moment, if it's not reciprocated, I don't have time for it. Mm -hmm. And it, it seems, it might seem harsh, but I have, you know, I wasted a lot of my time on not being rejected. I'd like to <laughs> offer a different way perspective because yeah. it's not that you've wasted any time. You're exactly where you're supposed to be. You're ex doing the things you're supposed to be doing. So those experiences, I mean, they're not waste of time. They're all the culmination, the learnings. And had you not been part of that, had you not been in those learning experiences, you wouldn't be at this point. So having learning experiences, even if they were hard, even if they were hurtful, um, 
it's not bad. It's a waste of time. It's just a learning experience. And this so is just what I love. Reframe that. <laughs> just I might okay. offer that to you as a reframe. Okay. <laughs> Let's just say that's what I love about our podcast, and that's why we're doing this. Because Brittany and I'll tell, I'll say this every episode if I have to. We're uh, like a juxtaposition. Like she's um, from the East Coast. I'm from the Southwest. She's married with two kids. I'm single and just sort of learning a lot of the things that I think Brittany has taught me a lot. What are they doing? Do you need a. <laughs> I have no other phone. You need to go check out. No other phone. Okay. <laughs> I'm working. I, no, I am working. working. <laughs> to me, it sounds like bloody murder, but you know. Um. So, we'll um, <laughs> oh, I'll just go ahead and jump back to the thing. Um. But what I love about Brittany and I is that we are at a juxtaposition. That we have very different lives, yet they they crisscross in a lot of ways and i you know there are times when i say something and like a, and a sh you come in with the let's not make you the like let's not make this such a negative thing it's like more positive spin on stuff and that's what i love about our conversations you know is that i'm over here like i wasted time on adam and bob and <laughs> you know, all the way to Z. And in reality, it's like, if I hadn't moved to Albuquerque with Adam, I would have never been taken out of my bubble. And you're right. He was like a bridge to other worlds, you know? Mm -hmm. And so, and I would never have found my jobs that I've worked and I've never would have found Brittany. <laughs> I would, I literally would really, never have found Brittany. Because really, it's all about me. <laughs> it really is, you know. <laughs> well, no, yeah. and, then Brittany, and then Brittany wouldn't have met me either. Just kidding. <laughs> um, we would have found each other eventually. What a misadventure we would have missed. No, um, well, that's, that, that's the thing is that if... It's a different mindset to come, and I'm I'm by nature a very positive person because if I'm not a positive person, I would go into a spiral of despair. <laughs> Let me be real clear. So I need a silver lining. You need it's, Cheryl. Yeah, I, I, yes, I need a silver lining. I need a Cheryl. I need for those of you who don't know. At the very beginning of this pandemic, and we, when my husband and I were both working from home, we invented Cheryl to make sure that um. We had someone else to blame for things. <laughs> so the, if the coffee didn't was still, no, someone drank all the coffee. Oh, that Cheryl didn't make another pot. Oh, wait, you left your papers on my desk? What's happening here? Oh, Cheryl did that. Yeah, so we, we invented a, a whole person <laughs> to avoid the fights. <laughs> And that's what you want in this pandemic. That's what you want from a partner. Someone who will invent a whole new partner so you don't have to fight. <laughs> yeah, you, you And I, I love that one of the things that I appreciate about my relationship with my husband, with Joe, is that we both know we're in this together. So when and, and he he also has some rejection issues. I think everyone has them personally, but it's, you know. I don't, I'm not ever concerned when we fight because in some relationships I would hold back the fight or I wouldn't talk about my needs or I wouldn't want people to know what I was going through because then they would reject me. And that was that fear of rejection. So I couldn't be like my whole self. And that's a very, what will end up happening is you end up throwing a phone and it's a Kia Sarah and it breaks in half, a little flip phone. Don't do that, people, because you bottle up though, you bottle it up and you hold it and then it, it comes out in other ways. So being able to say, hey, dude, what are you doing? This is not, and us being able to have a conversation about it and move forward from it and know that we're in this together, that this is a partnership, not just a marriage. I mean, that's, you want to find you a partner. Right? I, I put it on my uh, story, my stories. I put it on my Instagram, my Motivation Monday. Find you a partner you don't mind being stuck in the house with all the time. Yeah, you want to find someone <laughs> that you don't mind and that you can be your whole authentic self with. Because let's be honest, living with people, I don't know if you've had roommates, if you've had, you know, you get to see all the aspects and all the facets of a human, of a human being, human behavior. And just because you don't mesh with one part, 
and they're rejecting that doesn't mean they're rejecting you as a whole person. So I, I appreciate that about my husband and, and finding him and, and being able to be that authentic, true person that I am. And, you know, that really, that really touches base on a lot of how I feel like, because I've, I not only because of the rejection from a very early age or the thought of rejection, but when I was with Adam, it was always like, okay, well, we're, I don't want to fight. I don't ever want to hit these issues because you're going to throw the whole part. You're going to throw all of me away. Yeah. You know what I mean? It wasn't just a little aspect of my personality that he didn't agree with or uh, with Bob, you know, with Bob, it was like, I felt like I was walking on eggshells consistently, consistently. And every week he would break up with me. It was a whole I thing. It was very, it was very sad for me to go through that again, a positive experience because I learned, I learned that I'm not as far on my journey as I would like to be and that there are still deep-seated issues that need to be managed when I do get into a relationship. So it was a very huge learning experience for me, but also giving myself grace that, you know, I'm undoing 30 years of trauma. I'm doing, I mean. And even to take that a step further, it's also the trauma of your parents and the trauma of your great grandparents. I mean, we all have it. Let's be really clear and really honest. Some of my fear of rejection, I've inherited from my parents who mm -hmm. have inherited it from their parents. So that right. that historic trauma is a thing, man. It's a real thing. Oh yeah. <laughs> it's great. And I forget, I forget that it goes beyond it goes beyond our lifetimes of this, of everything that we're trying to undo. We're undoing other people's lifetimes. And it's very, um, very precarious. Uh, sometimes when I sit in my therapy sessions, I'm like, we just went through this last week. Why are we, like, why am I not good at it yet? You know, why, you know. I should be why, winning. I, <laughs> I should be winning therapy. <laughs> I know. And it's like, well, it's an onion. And, you know, like, there are different layers that I'm like, well, dang, I have a whole bag of onions, you know, and some of them gone bad. And, <laughs> But it's just the reality that these things and if like these things take time and you're on your journey and it's okay to be where you're at on your journey and that our entire lifetime consists of learning new things and how to cope with new things and figuring out our ticks and who we are. So I just want to put that out there too. Um, I also because I'm add still that our, I also want to add that our ticks are not who we are. Mm -mm. Our, our our lack of or our overabundance of coping mechanisms are not who we are. That's not right. the core of our being. And um, because if 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 it's all about, and I am really truly again positive Nelly over here. I have to find the positive, the happy out of it. Um, that when you frame when when you're framing it and you're thinking about it you're really if you're thinking about what am i learning for this also breaking some of that colonial scarcity mindset of you know there's not enough you're not enough there there's there is enough there is plenty there's actually and there's plenty. not and that there's not enough time to work through these things there is there's enough time <laughs> i mean because you could end up rushing through some of your your journey and your process and end up not being in a place that's safe and not being in a place that's good, you know, long-term. So it's good to, to take that time and make sure that you're thinking about, um, thinking about all those things. And that doesn't mean that, I mean, mistakes are not bad. <laughs> mistakes just are learning. So that you, you know, what was it? Thomas Edison said he found a thousand ways to, not create a light bulb well that's you're finding a thousand ways to not have a relationship when you're in that mode of for me when you're in that mode of, of fear of rejection and, and not i i learned a thousand ways to not live that way to be able to to articulate and i'm still i'm not perfect at it and i'm still working on it let me be yeah. very clear <laughs> uh being able to articulate how i'm feeling in the moment 
is sometimes very difficult for me. I, I could come back after I, cause sometimes I just need my, I need to process it a little bit and that's just, and having that moment to process it helps me understand myself more. It's not right. that I want to hide anything. It's not that I don't want to be honest. It's not that I don't necessarily um, want to be rejected. It's just no way I'm, I have this thing I say is like, is this a me issue or is this a them issue? Mm -hmm. So sometimes I actually take, I'm, I'm picking it apart in my brain, whatever the rejection, the, the dirty thing that was said to me or the mean thing that was said to me. I, sometimes I sit and I, and I pick it apart in my brain. I'm like, okay, wait, is this a me issue? Is this a them issue? If it is something I can control, if it was, I did something or I engaged, if, if there's something, a piece of it I can control, then that's a me issue. Mm -hmm. If it's completely, if it's something I cannot control, if it's how someone feels, if it's how someone thinks, if it's how, if it's what someone does, I have no control over that. So it's not a me issue. That's a them issue. I can only do, and, and I'll, I'll tell this story. It's uh, about that, that little internal tick. So I was working um, and there were two of us were, that were handling the social media and I, because my background's in English, I do not take um, uh, grammar fixes or, you know, if I've got something I've written and someone goes over with a red, red ink, it, it's, I don't take it personally. It is not a rejection for me. Mm. It's, oh, okay, I, I missed that. It must, oh, this will be better. Or, yeah, no, I don't believe that. I move on because that's, you know, it's someone who's doing some correcting is not a rejection. So I, I've gone through, we were both handling the social media and I noticed she wasn't the greatest speller. Uh, and so I would go in and I would fix her spelling and she called me, you know, she's like, Hey, can you stop doing that? I was like, what are you talking about? <laughs> it's just, she, she had this whole long speech about how I was, dismissing her work and how I wasn't doing what I was supposed to be doing and, and that I was, you know, I was not her boss. And it was this whole, I was like, Oh, oh okay. And so I took a deep breath uh, after I got fun with her. I took a breath. I was like, wait a minute, this heifer in my head, I had that whole conversation. I was like, wait, wait, what is the me issue? What is the her issue? And Rick recognizing that that was a rejection for her. I was able to go back and say, Hey sis, how can we, what would make, what would, what would this look like for you and how would this work for you? And what would be a better way of handling this situation going forward? Cause I want to work with you. You're really good. And I want to learn from you. You've got a lot to teach me. She said, well, instead of doing it this way, instead of just going in and fixing it, just tell me. And then I can learn from it too. I was like, Oh, I can do that. And it became a much better working relationship after that. So some, uh, just that little trick, if you have nothing else, just having that little trick of going, wait, what's them issue? What's me issue? And then understanding what your part of it is. Cause sometimes it is a you issue. Oh yeah. <laughs> sometimes I'm it's a thing that you can control. Worry. And it's, sometimes it's a thing that you can control and take care of. Sometimes it's not. I mean, that's the most valuable thing that I've learned um with everything is like what's a me issue what's a her issue and it was i'll tell you like a really small story is one time um we were i was trying to or um, somebody needed a ride and i'm the person the kind of and this also goes to but like where the trauma triggers are and they just needed a ride and I was so against doing it. I was resentful. I was mad. And like, if, you know, like those things, like just one of those things. And that's not me. I will move mountains for people. I'm a really good friend. I do. I will go out of my way for people. But I was like, okay, why am I feeling this way? Because this person also didn't do anything to me that necessarily, um, what like nothing personal whatsoever what was my it, i knew it was a me issue and when i finally broke it apart it was it was actually just my perception of being rejected by my whole tribe and i was projecting that on her mm -hmm. because she tends to want to out indian me or you know I love I those think, people 
<laughs> everyone in general, right? Everyone in like they're just they're just super Indian. And we talked about this in a different episode about being super Indian. And so like, and because she was part of my tribe, it me, I was projecting my rejection from my tribe on her. Mm. And so it created this resentment. And when I figured that out, our relationship was so much different out of that because it was only hurting me. It wasn't hurting her. And it wasn't that she and, and, and it wasn't that she was doing anything <laughs> out of the way. You know no. what I mean? Yeah, she I mean, wasn't was she wasn't to... she wasn't going, Paula, you're not Navajo and you're not Navajo enough and nobody right. wants you. I mean she wasn't doing any of that. No, no, I mean, I, no, I, I know mean, the situation so I can so and she wasn't and, was and I think this is <laughs> I think, and, and Brittany has been a lot a part a lot of this growing, but I think that was the first situation where I got it, where it clicked. Uh -huh. I'm like, oh, it isn't personal. I mean, it's personal to me, mm -hmm. but for me to be acting out of character and out of turn and not who I am as a person was a big red flag for myself to check in with my little rejected five-year-old <laughs> self, you know what I mean? And when I did yeah. that work... It makes, when you do that work, it makes it so much easier to relate to people or to interact with people mm -hmm. because Brittany knows when I get in those states, she knows to be like, hey, you know, what's going on here? And I'd love to dive into this whole situation Yeah, well, um, in another episode. Uh, yeah, because well, some, sometimes, and I feel very comfortable with you because we're very good friends and we've, we've again... Mm -hmm. These are conversations we would literally have sitting outside or, or sitting you know, in the morning at work, whatever, drinking our coffee. Um, definitely that when I, again, it's taking that personal out of it. And when you take that out, it doesn't become about you not being worthy or you not being mm -hmm. good enough. It take It goes back into, wait, what are the things that I can do? And what are the things I can't do? Because, mm -hmm. and I, I've said this several times in this episode, and I'll say it again. There's only so much you actually have control over. And even that, you don't, you have no control over how you feel about something. That's why I like saying that your feelings are your feelings and your feelings are valid. They are your feelings. And you can feel, and my mom used to tell me this too. She's like, you can feel any way you need to feel. Where you have control is how you project those feelings onto other people. And so sometimes when, and I remember doing this as a kid is like, I feel like you don't like me. So I'm going to not like you first. Right. And I'm going to show you how much I don't like you. Mm -hmm. Crazy, crazy. Cause I mean, I, for one, I didn't even know that that person did or did not like me. <laughs> Sounds like middle school. It is so with middle school, but we know middle school people who are grown to adults. Oh. <laughs> we know middle school people like you don't like me. Therefore, I'm going to show you first. And uh, the first step of that is I don't even really know that. I don't even really know how they feel about me. And I have no and more importantly, I have no control over. So even if I'm mean to someone, that doesn't necessarily mean they're not going to like you. And. And this ties back <laughs> into I'm gonna reject you first before you reject me, because mm -hmm. because that bulls that that to me and my twisted little middle school brain or our twisted little trauma brains. That I think somehow, middle school is trauma. So <laughs> <laughs> oh, you you could not pay me to do it again. But it ties back into that rejection of I'm gonna reject you before you reject me. I'm avoiding this rejection. So if I pull a fast one on you first and I get to be in the power position when in reality, you know, we're trying to control it and it's not controllable because it's not about us. And I feel like with my anecdote, my little story, she had nothing to do with me, but I was going to reject her first. I was going to, I was going to be resentful first mm -hmm. because it represented such a, a bigger issue with me. And that's where the power lies is how we react to it, how we evaluate ourselves. Because my trauma can be really mean and I don't like it. Uh, I heard someone <laughs> call it your internal bully and why would you let your bully beat you up? I was like, right. oh, 
that's that's profound there why because we all have an intern well maybe we all don't apparently people don't think in pictures they only think in words and some people only think in words and don't think in pictures i don't understand some um, people don't have an internal voice did you know that yeah I, in my mind. no <laughs> does not compute does not compute. <laughs> Someone said your internal voice could be your soulmate, and I was all dang, my soulmate is mean. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, it's um yeah. So if you take nothing else from this episode, take that is it a me issue? Is it a you issue? What can I control? And just know that rejection is a part of life and rejection is not about you. Yay! <laughs> so I think that is where we're gonna end this episode like comment share um we would love to hear your stories if you guys like have a small snippet uh because we've all been through this or we've all had these learning lessons so like comment subscribe turn the notification bell on um you can find me on instagram at xo honeybee marie xo or paula marie herbert on facebook and you it's can find Brandy her Shulman, all platforms except twitter it's a whole thing but uh we're working on that um yeah and if you have if you want to share your rejection rejection sorry if you want to share your rejection <laughs> story below or if you talk about how you're you've uh you've overcome some of those issues because again we've all had them or if you just want to tell us your favorite animal i'd appreciate that <laughs> oh my favorite animal is a polar bear in the comments <laughs> yeah <laughs> all right I'll all right guys <laughs> thank you so much we appreciate you stopping by we'll talk to you later bye